Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, what you're looking at on your screen right now is the biblical city known as Tyre. And, of course, as you see that smoke billowing up on your screen right there from all directions, this is Israel bombing the ancient city of Tyre. Uh, very sad to see this, if you ask me, especially in light of what Jesus said about Tyre. Okay, we're going to go into some of this here. I want to just show, it, show you some of the latest things happening in this marvelous city, this ancient biblical city. Look at there again. And Israel just has absolutely no respect whatsoever. No respect for King David. King Solomon, we already know there is a disgust for Jesus, uh, but uh, you know this is this is Israel's attack on this uh, beautiful ancient city here, and uh, and as you can see here uh, again, just more and more, just so sad, what's happening to Tyre. You know, very sad. I think today eight bombs have been used. Look at that. Private apartment buildings blown completely up. <clears throat> you know, and I don't I don't understand for the life of me why any Christian would ever support uh, this type of barbaric uh, activity happening on a civilian population the way Israel is doing there. Uh, now, there are some people who are going to say to me, they say, well, Steve, you know, let's face the fact God said he's going to bring a judgment on Tyre. Okay, yep, you're right. That's true. Ezekiel is one good example. Joel also speaks about it. Uh, and I will take a look at that here. <clears throat> and shall cause their voice to be heard over thee, and shall cry and bitter, and shall cast up dust upon their heads. They shall roll themselves in the ashes. And they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee, and gird them with sackcloth, and they shall weep for the bitterness of the soul with bitter lamentation. And in their wailing, they shall take up a lamentation for thee, and lament over thee, who was, li who was there like Tyre, fortified in the midst of the sea. Well, <clears throat> let's face it, Tyre is not fortified today. And of course, Ezekiel prophesied this some 500 years before the coming of Christ. Okay, 500 years before the coming of Christ. Now, I'm going to go back in history, though, before we look at this judgment here and just remind you of King Tar the king of Tyre, Haram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpets and masons, and they built the David a house. Do you remember the beautiful psalm that David writes about the daughter of the king of Tyre? What, what an incredible psalm. I think it's in Psalm 43. I may be wrong on that, but somewhere right around there is where it's at. Also, we have here where the king of Tyre had furnished Solomon with the cedar trees and the cypress trees with gold according to all his desire. And then King Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. Now, of course, King Hiram was not very pleased with what he called cities uh, around the Galilee that was given to him. But nonetheless, <clears throat> even though he asked him, he says, what cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? But notice, he called Solomon a brother. But he did send, regardless, six score talents of gold. Everything that Solomon asked for, he gave him. And they were a flourishing city. And Ezekiel did prophesy their demise. That is very true. In fact, when was that demise? It's not today. It was Alexander the Great. It was a fortified city. It took Alexander the Great seven years, seven years to defeat Tyre. He had to build a bridge to the island. It was so fortified. That's the fortified city, right? That's what we read about uh, it said Alexander the Great, the siege of Tyre in 332 BCE. All right, that's 
200 years after Ezekiel's prophecy, the siege of Tyre in 332 BCE, and I'll blow that up for those of you that want to be able to see that a little bit better. One of the most famous and challenging military campaigns led by Alexander the Great during his conquest of the Persian Empire, Tyre, an island city of the Phoenician stronghold of the Eastern Mediterranean, held immense strategic importance due to its naval port and its symbolic and pra <coughs> practical connection to the Persian Empire. The siege exemplifies Alexander's military ingenuity, determination, and resourcefulness in overcoming an almost impregnable city. That's what Ezekiel just described, the fortified city. Okay, but he does defeat it. In 332 BCE, Alexander has successfully defeated the Persian king Darius III. The battle of uh, Issus and was advancing southward to secure the eastern Mediterranean coast. His goal was to cut off Persian naval power and secure his rear flank as he prepared to march further east to the heart of the Persian Empire. The coastal cities of Levant, including Tyre, were crucial in regard as they hosted the Persian navy and acted as gates to the Egypt and the broader Mediterranean. Some people might argue today that Iran, because of uh, Hezbollah, also is controlling Tyre still to this day. <clears throat> Hezbollah doesn't have some huge naval port down in Tyre like they did years ago. And it's not fortified. It's just a residential city, an island. It is a, it is a beautiful place to be able to go visit in Lebanon. Uh, but uh, it's, not, it's not formidable, as it says here, impregnable due to its location and formidable walls. It also had a powerful navy that could supply the city by sea, making a direct siege difficult. Despite this, Alexander needed to take Tari to prevent the city from being used as the Persian naval base. It could threaten his supply lines and encourage rebellion on other coastal cities. And he does. He builds that huge... Um, um, unbelievable bridge much like what uh, like the Persian uh, king did of old to Israel down at Masada and built the bridge up to Masada to be able to take the Jews that had uh, gone there for, for uh, to hide out so very resourceful in those days and no doubt maybe that was where uh, he got his inspiration I'm sorry, that's 70, is flip-flop those time dates, I apologize, we're, we're, we're talking about, <laughs> I'm sure that Alexander the Great is where the king of Rome uh, that came down and uh, besieged Israel in 70 AD is the one that got the idea from what Alexander did there uh, in sieging Masada, I had that backwards, I apologize. Anyway, though, as I said, we saw, though, that Tyre was very, it was a very great city. It was defeated. It is, was totally wiped out during that time. But then we fast forward to the time of Jesus, right? Matthew, for example, chapter 11. Watch what Jesus says here. Woe unto you, Chorazin. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. What? Two things you need to note here. One, Tyre, Jesus is very clear, acknowledging their destruction. So don't look at Ezekiel as a prophecy of a modern-day destruction of Tyre and deserving of something. False. False narrative. Because Jesus said, had the mighty works been done in Tyre and Sidon, or Sodom, that were done in you, Bethsaida, by the way, is just north of Capernaum, that's where the mother-in-law, by the way, of uh, Peter lived. They've been done in you. They've been standing to this day. He knew that they had a heart that they would repent. And I'm going to prove that to you as well. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and for Sodom at the day of judgment than for you. 
Whoa! <laughs> Are you serious? The chosen people of God? And it's going to be more tolerable for both those people than for those there because they rejected what? They rejected Jesus Christ. And yet we yoke up with rabbinical leaders today and say we have something to learn from them because after all, Jesus was a Jew. Well, the Jew Jesus just told you that it would be more toler tolerable. And just so you know, let me, let me take you to the Hebrew Matthew. Let's just clarify this real quick, right? Woe unto you, Chorazim, and woe unto you, Bethsaida, for if in Tyre and Sodom, I want you to know that Sodom is Sodom, that is, Taro Edita and Sadama, the signs have been done which were done in you. They would have turned in repentance at that time in sackcloth and ashes. Sodom and Gomorrah would have repented at the works that Jesus did. And he said, Truly I say to you, it shall be easier for Tyre and Sodom than for you. This is the Jew Jesus that the rabbis are trying to tell you they need to teach you who he really was. Jesus was, <laughs> he was God manifested in the flesh. Let's just face it. He came to the lineage of the Jewish people to fulfill the promise of Abraham, that promised seed, to fulfill the promise of Genesis, of the woman's seed, to correct all the ills in the world, to reunite humanity. The only reason, and by the way, Jewish did not exist in Abraham's days. Jewish did not exist in the days of uh, Isaac. Jewish did not exist in the days of Jacob. The name Jew came more in the times of Christ because of the tribe of Judah and, and Judea. And of course, the house of Israel had been dispersed uh, to the four corners of the known earth at that time. But Jesus also went out to those four corners and brought them back in already, as we see on a remnant of them had returned according to prophecy in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, that is, where, where Peter stands up and said, Be it unknown unto you, O house of Israel, this same Jesus whom you crucified has been made both Lord and Christ. So Abraham's promise of Genesis 12 was that through him, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And that was through Jesus Christ and him alone. So it doesn't matter if you're Jewish, if you're the house of Israel, or if you are Gentile, you are all blessed through Jesus Christ. And those judgments of those lands were fulfilled 300 years before Christ even got here. That's why Jesus actually says that. If if the works that I did for Tyre, if I, that I did here in Israel while I'm here, the very, the very Messiah himself is there and he's doing these mighty works in Bethsaida and Chorazim and Capernaum. And he said, if I had done these kind of works in Tyre or even in Sodom, they'd still be standing to this day because they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. And yet we sit there and elevate the, the modern state of Israel who is over there burning and scorching the land, burning and killing all the people, destroying all the churches, That regardless if their doctrines are not 100% with your ideology, but nonetheless they at least proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, burning them to the ground. As Rabbi Mitzrahi said, if we occupy the land, we're supposed to destroy all the idols in the land, so we should destroy all the churches, even all the churches in America. That's what he says. And you support that. And you that shows me you do not support Jesus Christ in. Because Jesus said it'd be it'll be more tolerable on the dead judgment for them than it will be for you. 
Let's see. Let's look at why. Let's take a look at the book of Mark. Same situation, right? And then he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it. He actually went to Tyre, but he didn't want he didn't want anybody to know that. And he entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. By the way, you might say, well, Sidon, well, how did that get there? Well, you got to remember, Tyre was part of the Persian Empire. If you ever look at the map of the Persian Empire, it wraps around Israel right down there towards Sodom and stuff. So yes, but he couldn't be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. And the woman was Greek, a Syphonician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast out the devil out of her daughter. And Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. Now, if like you... I was taught years ago as like the Gentile, Jesus refers to the Gentiles as dogs, a low life, right? It's not really that he's referring to them as low life. That's totally incorrect in that regard there. What Jesus is saying here is the order of the way a household who has a pet dog, you would feed your kids before you feed your dog. Now, the odd thing is, right? The, here's what's really funny, right? Rabbi... Tovia Singer actually brought up a mitzvah from Talmudic teaching is that you feed the dog before you feed the kids. Did you know that? That's actually another correction of Talmudic error. Didn't know that, did you? Tovia teaches that the, uh, the pets must be fed first, then you feed your family. He's actually correcting a Talmudic lie, or should say a Talmudic error, what the rabbis had taught. For it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. The children should eat first. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. That's even before they get fed. They're still eating of the same food. What a faith this woman has, right? And he said unto her for this saying, Go thy way, the devil has gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out of her daughter and laid upon the bed. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. Now, I want to bring to your attention, I think in Matthew, uh, let's see here. Uh, that time, let's see. I want to, I want to make sure though, before we get away from this, let's look at Tyree... Um, there is actually a beautiful passage there. Let me let me look at it like this here. Thou, son of David. That's what the woman calls him. Thou, son of David. Okay. Yeah, it's actually a Mark 1047. Let's let's jump back over here to Mark. Let's go to chapter 10. And uh, chapter 10. And I think this is still in Tyre, if I remember right. Oh, I got the wrong verse, I believe. Hang on. Sorry, that's the wrong one. That's the blind man. Hang on. Still. 
Hang on. I just quoted this the other day in one of the shorts I did. Let me find it. Yeah, here it is. Matthew 15, 22. Then Jesus, when he thence departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a woman of Canaan. You know, I know in the Hebrew they have Sodom. I'm wondering, though, if I don't have something wrong on that. I'll look at that a little bit later there. I may have something different on that. So we'll look. I'll get that corrected for you guys on a different video. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Now, of course, this is where he also says, it's, uh, uh, she kept crying after him. Uh, let's see. She, uh, he said, but he says, I'm not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. <clears throat> Then came one and worshipped him and saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet for me to take the children's bread to cast it to the dogs. Now, by the way, notice too, though, he actually said he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Think of that one for a moment, right? But that woman, though, that he speaks about there, when she calls out to him, Son of David, I don't know if you really realize what she's doing, but she's employing upon him for his mercy because of the relationship that the king of Tyre had with David and with Solomon. Mostly David. Uh, and that's why she says, thou son of David. She knew that there was a prophecy about the son of David that would come, the Messiah, uh, undoubtedly. But also she's in, employing upon him because of David. And I thought that was very interesting as well. So I wanted to just kind of share that with you. Uh, in closing here, let me just kind of, uh, before I get there, let me go back again. So therefore, what we're looking at here is Israel has no right to be doing what they are doing to Tyree. They have no right. That judgment happened with the king of Alexandria when he came down and he conquered that entire region there. It was when it was fortified. Anything that you see now, and I don't know, I've not really looked to see if people are looking at this and citing biblical prophecy, things like that. Israel tends to try to follow those patterns there, but it's not. It clearly is not. It is a wholesale slaughter on civilians. And that's what that was. A high rise of civilian people living in that. So many times this happens. Israel is just bombing indiscriminately, killing as many people as they can. They figure if they kill the civilians, the civilians will cry out for an end and, and overthrow Hezbollah, things like that. I'm not supportive of Hezbollah. I'm not supportive of Hamas. I am supportive of the right to life and freedom and people to have the right to choose. That's what I am supportive of. Uh, in closing, I want to also, again, we just we had uh, the, the Zoom meeting last night. This here, PhD uh, student, graduate student, fixing to graduate here with her doctorate degree in biology. Uh, we did the interview the other day. It was hard to hear. I wanted to play a little clip from her. Uh, we have here also Shannon um, uh, Marvel there. Uh, her head, husband Todd was there uh, teaching on this. This will be on Benun X39. You can see the video in the entirety. But her testimony, not just from the doctorate standpoint, uh, about uh, these patches, but her testimony is marvelous. Listen to this for a moment. To reach out to y'all to, um, to try the patches because I was like, what can I lose? You know, $100 a month, you know, mm -hmm. per preferred customer. I was like, let me just try it, you know. And also just um, from looking into the science behind it um, a little bit, um, when I was first starting to become aware of it, like, you know, about the GHKCU molecule and all that it does and the stem cell activation, I was like, oh, this is solid, <laughs> you know? And um, so I was very impressed. And so needless to say, I went ahead and I, uh, I tried it and I was the one patch wonder. <laughs> like from the very, from the very first day, I, I could not believe it. Like I put it on and within hours, I was like, wow, this is the best day I've had in I don't even know how long, <laughs> you know? And so I was super impressed. And like I said, the therapy was 12 weeks. 
I'll post uh, this portion separately on Benoon X39 because she goes into the science and the biology of X39 and because she specifically worked on biomodulation therapy uh, at the university uh, level there in Texas there. That was her, that was her, uh, her doctorate level uh, part that she's doing is bio, bio photo, uh, biomodule photo, photo, ah, can you get the words right? Biomodule ph phototherapy. I think I got that right. Anyway, she talks about how the patch does this remarkably from a systemic level, a systemic level, but can capture the body's light. Doesn't even need a laser, captures the body's light and is able to do it. She considers, like Dr. Tesla, this is even greater than other uh, types of therapies. I also wanted to include here too, um, let me see if I can find it here for you real quick. Uh, uh, Ron Gunter. Now, Ron Gunter has studied naturopathic medicine. Uh, he is also a master uh, of acupuncture. If I've, see, not acupuncture, but ac uh, uh, acupressure points. He's a master of that. He's got a doctorate level in naturopathic medicine. Um, and uh, he is also an engineer and uh, aerospace engineer. So I want to include him. I got John Moore here too, and just share a little bit about what, um, let me get to where he's at there and talk about his, just recapping some of his own testimony. John, you've had probably the most amazing testimonies of anyone thus far. And I know you've shared it with everybody before, but we've got some new folks in here tonight a friend of ours, and I won't pick on her, but Angela, we met recently, and yes. she's here tonight as well. Uh, can you just share with everyone a little bit about the testimonies that you've had? Uh, I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I had congestive heart failure and stage four kidney failure and a whole bunch of things, actually. I had my thyroid cut out 10 years ago. Anyway, they took me off the medicine and I took a little more and I shouldn't have taken that. I had to wait for it to come back down because I thought maybe it wasn't producing enough. But uh, the stage four went to stage one and I don't think I have the problem with that anymore because no, nothing showed up on the blood test. This is amazing. Uh, when How long are you on patches, Ron? I'm sorry? How long I have... We had that there. We also, John Moore uh, talked a little bit about this as well. Let me play that. And um, are we still there? There we are. Yes, we're still here. <laughs> uh, and uh, I've been uh, doing radio for since uh, 1995. And um, so I've built up an audience the past 25 years that uh, they know me, they trust me, and because of that knowledge and trust, they are trying the LifeWave patches and then are calling in with the success they're having. So mm -hmm. it's all been a win-win situation. And that's about as good as any business can be is where uh, people are getting help and then they want to talk to others about it. And then that's where, we're, that's where we are, Steve. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, the stories just go on and on and on. And the group that we have, we didn't have a big group. We had about 20 people all together. Uh, that were in there, but every one of the people you see on your screen now, Janice, Kim, John, Donna, uh, all have got remarkable testimonies. And then, of course, Kathleen hopped in tonight, right? There's Kathleen on the bottom right, right there. Uh, and we just met Angela just recently, a very precious lady there. But Kathleen is going to also, she's going to give a new, a, an updated testimony, her right cataract coming out. Uh, so let me just see if I catch that in the right spot there where that's at. I'd love for you guys to hear that. Um, let me go back here. Where, where we got you? Maybe it's right there. Let's listen in. But uh, his blood pressure normalized. I mean, he's t he has a blood pressure of a 20 year old man. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And he was mm -hmm. already like stage two hypertension. I was worried. I never wanted to put him on any drugs. I was trying to do everything naturally but it's just now. really went away so yep, um, it did. you guys can call us anytime you want mr 
got it. I had to have a rolling walker. My husband had to help me. It was horrible. And at four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I got out of bed and I could walk on it. Janice had just had an injury. I'm telling you, I'm walking regular now. And that was just like not even 48 hours ago. Wow, so, that just that's happened amazing. to Janice. And that's right? another patch. It's called Ice Weight Patch. It's a pain She's patch. She's using that for pain. But some, I had those more. Okay. Well, hydration is okay. not just to drink water that doesn't cheap. I can also cleaning. share that this is the one that I use. All right, let me back up. I, I just. This thing about this cat. So at first, just, that's just been something very knowledgeable about patch placement. One thing that he shared with me, sure point, a little bit immediately. A lot of people follow us in the middle. Wanted people. Come on, Kathleen. Uh, I keep seeing her bouncer on the screen, but I'm trying to see where she's talking at. Jennifer, thank, thank you. you. Thank all of you. Uh, okay, back up. Back what up. happens Steve. this patch producing it because we are living a horrifically eight hours and then 12 hours um my that's jennifer i can hear i can tell yes. by the voices so and then you start feeling bad right it's not that you're gonna die you're not gonna die but i will tell you one okay to the carnosine is and they need hold me up well immediately immediately here it is here yes. it is. that's what i love about ron he's got such a vast knowledge on those pressure points yeah. and what they mean can and I give you a way, praise report? Here we go, yes. Kathleen. The uh, right eye that I haven't really said too much about because that one had 13 surgeries on it. I'm starting to see my hand through it. <gasps> Amen. Yeah, this is like, it was completely there blocked. There you go. And wow. now I can see my hand. Kathleen that was legally blind. Legally blind before she started X39. She shares in here at the two that night uh, four months is how long it took for the first cataract to fall off. Scott, uh, he's on John Moore's show. He told his eye doctor about what happened to Kathleen. He laughs at him, only to find out that his cataracts were gone when the doctor examined him, so he laughs at his doctor. You know, people, I, I just got a message the other day on Facebook. This sister says, oh, Brother Steve's Facebook page has been hijacked. He's never, he doesn't, he doesn't sponsor products. And so I wrote her and I said, sister, you're right. All these years I've done this. Uh, for a little bit, I did uh, Dr. Pigeon's Sephir Bible. I did that for a little bit. I thought that was an honorable thing to promote. Um, and then I promoted EMP Shield because I believed in it. And we did this beautiful documentary. I still strongly believe it's the most incredible surge protection device you'll ever buy. Uh, not to mention, yeah, we have no way of 100% proving EMP, but through the test labs it has produced and it, and it should actually work, right? Now solar flares. But other than that, I just never got into products. I'm kind of leery of that. I promote LifeWave because I believe in it. I believe in it. And, and I have to tell you straight up, I mean, EMP Shield, they bless our ministry with people that purchase an EMP Shield. And EMP Shield far exploded anything I ever promoted, you know. But LifeWave, I just, I could not help but support it because I saw what it did for Yana. And then I'm thinking, well, if I hold back and wait until I see results myself, mine might take months. As I was even told, it'll take six months or better. And it did. It did. But I have had so many improvements how could I how could I hold this from you? That's like even, you know, there's no comparison when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Nothing compares to, to his word. But then I discovered the number of people suffering. And as I promoted this, and then I seen Ron Gunter there at the top right. His own testimony was, his own doctor's testimony about him, he didn't expect him to live much longer. And that's why he made that kind of comical statement, I'm alive. These people are so happy. Different people have had different successes. But you owe it to yourself. 
And if you try to stop, I can't encourage you for your own sake. Come back, dedicate a year to this. Dedicate a year. That's, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Dedicate a year. It'll change your life. Anyway, Stephen Benoon, I'll hold my peace on that for a little while. Let you guys think about it. Uh, in the link below, you'll have any way to contact us about it. If we can help you, if you want to do it as a business. You don't have to do it as a business, by the way. You can just be a customer. Like Jolene, the biologist, she became a customer. Now she's so excited for what it did for her. She's converting over to a distributor because she said, I'm going to share it with my friends. And, you know, hey, it doesn't take but a few friends and it pays for your own order. So why not? Right. Like my wife says, do baby steps as a business. Right. If it pays your car payment next. Hey, amen. But the thing is, is you're helping other people along the way. Focus on that. Focus on what you can do to help somebody else. That's what my testimony is to you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. IsraeliNewsLive.org is our website. Your support of this broadcast means so much to us. And we thank you and love you.